features of the step sequence that are very important in using PSPSeq. First of all, when you trigger a new note in a track that already has triggered notes, PSPSeq copies all trig, vol, and pan settings, along with all synthesizer parameters that control what a track sounds like from the closest previously triggered step to the newly triggered step. For example, let's trigger a few more hits in the current track. So I'm going to put hits on step 0, and step 8, and step 16. Every time a new note is triggered, it copies data from the last triggered step location in loop. So you can see that every step in this loop had the same frequency and offset values, and also the same trig and ball values. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify some of the synthesizer parameters at step 16 right here. So by pressing triangle and the analog pad down, I'm going to change the frequency to, let's say, about 1500. So you can hear how the, the generator sounds different at step 16. Now if I go to step 20 and trigger a note, you see it copies the frequency from step 16 into step 20. And then if I was to go to step 24 and press uh, X again, then it would also grab it from step 20. Okay, next, the, uh, the O button can be used to copy and paste synthesizer parameters from one step to another. So what I'm going to do in this case is copy the synthesizer parameters from step 8 into step 24. So to copy parameters, you press the O button, and then you press the left trigger. And when you do this, you can see that step 8 is now brown instead of green. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to step 24 and press O and the right trigger. And now the frequency is the same in steps, uh, steps 8 and steps 24. Now, also remember that you can use O plus the right trigger to modify all the pan values for all steps in a loop. Uh, however, the copy paste functionality takes precedence, so if you want to actually use that functionality of, um, of moving all pan steps at the same time in a loop, you need to uh, unselect the step that you are copying from. So I go back to step 8 and press O and the left trigger, and now step 8 is back to green. <coughs> Uh, another important feature in PSPSeq is the ability to load synthesis parameters at a step without re-triggering the output envelope. Uh, this is very useful if you want to have a sound that evolves over time. For example, if you have a synthesizer sound with a filter where the cutoff frequency changes uh, over, over a long period of time. Uh, to set if a trigger step does not reset the output envelope, use the X button in the D-pad. So I'm going to go to step 16 here, and I'm going to hold X and push the D-pad down. And now you can see that step 16 is no longer blue, it is orange. Uh, and an orange step indicates that the output envelope is not re-triggered, and that it becomes what's called a control-only step. And if you listen, you can hear that at step 16, we're not uh, restarting the synthesizer sound. And if you press uh, X again and push down on that step, you can see that you go from a control step to a triggered step. Uh, I'm going to get into details on how to actually use control-only steps for making interesting synthesizer sounds uh, later in the tutorial, uh, specifically when I start talking about uh, the synthesis parameters. Uh, lastly, while uh, I haven't talked about uh, the menu system yet, I want, I want to give one tip as to how to quickly access the synthesizer menu from the step sequencer. What you would do is you would press triangle plus left trigger and right trigger. Um, pressing these three buttons at the same time brings you to the synthesizer menu for the current uh, track that you're on. So triangle, oops. Push one button there. Push triangle, left trigger, and right trigger. Now you can see that uh, we have a pop-up menu in the middle of the screen, and um, this allows us access to synthesizer parameters. Um, 
I'm going to uh, not get into details of how to use the menu system right now. Uh, so I will say that in order to exit the menu system, you press the start button. So you press start, and menu system goes away. Uh, one last thing is, is that I want to explain how to swap between loops in PSPC. Uh, PSPC supports up to 100 unique loops per song. Uh, and the way you switch loops is by pressing the left and right triggers. So if I press the right trigger, now we're on a new loop. We're on loop one. If you look on the bottom of the screen, you can see there's an LP01. Now if I press right trigger again, we go to two, then three, then four, and five, so on. If I press the left trigger, we go backwards one loop. So now we're back on loop zero again. If I press left trigger on loop zero, we go to loop 99, which is the last loop. Press right trigger on loop 99, we're at loop zero. 